Morning, church. It's good to be together here this morning. Are we ready to praise the Lord this morning? Yeah. 
Amen. Would you stand up for me in this place? God, we want to bless your name. Lord, we want to worship you, Lord. He's always with us.
call on him, amen. We need, we need his Holy Spirit. We need more of his Holy Spirit. The Lord wants to sustain you, but we have to surrender ourselves to him. You know that? It's so easy we're in, this, in our wealth, and we don't even realize that we're wealthy, but you know, most, most of us aren't wondering, can I find a drink of water somewhere? You know, most of us, you know, we could, we could find food if we were hungry. You know, we, it's, it's somewhere, right? But, but you know, um, in the Bible, Jesus, you know, he lived in a desert. And there was, there, when they needed water, they had to go for miles to find that water. And they had to carry that water a long distance. Water was a precious commodity. But, you know, Jesus, he said to a woman one day, he said, listen, that water that you're carrying, you're coming for it, you, you know, it's not going to, it doesn't do everything you need. It doesn't do everything you need. He said, you know what? I've got water, he said, that will make you never thirst again. And, and you know, she didn't know what he meant, right? But, but he's like, listen, I'm not talking about that jug you got, that jug of water there. I'm not talking about that. That's that, that's that, that yeah, quenches the thirst and the tongue. It's, it's, but, but it's, you know, your soul is, needs more. Your soul needs more. And you know what? I have that. And if you come to me, you will never need again. Come drink from the living water, he said. And, and, you know, but, but Jesus, you know, he, he, I mean, there he was, right, standing right in front of her, right with those disciples, you know, and, 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 and but he's not, he's not standing right beside me physically today, is he, right? But right, right before he went back to heaven, Jesus said to his disciples, yeah, don't go anywhere, he said, just please, don't touch a thing, don't go anywhere, just wait, because you know what, I'm going to send another after me, and I'm going to send that, that comfort of the Holy Spirit who can come and be with you and can sustain you and can help you. But we need to call on him. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me again. We call on the Holy Spirit to fill us again. Because you know what? We, we can know who Jesus is, but, but I mean, is he just up there in heaven? He's not just up there in heaven. He's here in his Holy Spirit. Rest. Fill us, empower us, enable us, enable us to go through the moments of darkness and difficulty because he stands with you. You know, in the, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come along and come upon individuals and it would come upon and empower an individual for things. But then Jesus suddenly said, you know what, that Holy Spirit, it's going to empower every single one of you that would desire to be filled with that Holy Spirit. And so I, my prayer is like, we need to call on God. We don't want to just be knowers of the Lord. We don't want to just be knowers of the word. We, just don't, we don't want to just know Jesus. Well, he, he died. He, I'm glad he's there. But we want to be filled with his spirit, the power of God. God, would you fill us with your spirit again? Come and fill us again. Come and fill us again. Come and fill us again. We bless your name, Lord.
all my days and I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head and I will sing of the goodness of a story that many of you will be familiar with. It's a story in the Bible about a son. And the son said, Dad, I want my money now. And the father gave it to him, all of his inheritance. 
And the Bible says that he went on and he squandered all of his inheritance. It says he squandered it in, in riotous living. And there he felt, he found himself surrounded by friends who were milking him for every last penny that his father had given him. He was living the high life. He was living the party life. It says he squandered his father's wealth on prostitutes and, 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 and all the stuff that goes with that. And then when the money train ran out, the friends went away. And this son, this son found himself all alone in a pigsty. No place for a Jewish boy to be. He found himself alone in a pigsty with, with really nothing else to wear other than the stinking clothing that he had on. And not a penny to his name. And he found himself eating the food of the pigs. And then the Bible says he came to his senses. There he was in the pig's side. And he had a thought. thought. I wonder, I wonder if I go home, would my father let me be one of his servants? Because, because even the servants, they, they've got way more. I wonder maybe, I don't think, I don't think he would, but, but maybe if I go home, maybe my dad, maybe he'd let me just be a servant. Oh, just to be a servant in my father's house. You see, what he didn't know is that from the very day that the father gave the son all of his inheritance. And he watched his son going merrily down the road every morning. Early in the morning, the father, the father would get up and he'd look a long way down the road and he'd be saying, thank you that my son is coming home. And the weeks turned into months and the months turned into years. But every day, the father would go in and he'd look down that pathway and he'd say, thank you that my son is coming home. Well, when the son came to his senses, finally he said, I gotta go. Like, I'm gonna die if I don't go. And so he did know the way. He knew the way. He knew the way back to his father. And so, so he, he had his head down and, you know, his shoulders were slumped over. And he was just thinking, I, I, I don't think... He had these thoughts. I don't think my father's going to accept me. And he was still a long way off. But his father saw him. His father saw him a long way off. Can I tell you what? Your father sees you this morning. Even if you're a long way off. You know, Pastor Jason, you were singing his goodness. And his goodness you know, the father went, the son didn't even see him. Oh, but the father, oh, he saw the son, and he went running to his son. Can I tell you what? Your father sees you this morning. And you know what? He's running after. Can we sing it? Your goodness. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Your goodness. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me With my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me I'll sing it again Your goodness, Lord Your goodness is running after It's running after me Yes, Lord Oh Your Right. 
son, but he nearly got tackled because the father hugged him. And the son said, I'm sorry, stop it, the father said. Hurry up, get a robe, get some clothes, bring a ring, let's go, we're going to have a party. Oh, and that's what the father's saying to you this morning. And when you realize it, no matter where you've been, do you know what you're going to say? You're going to say, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am made, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing it to the Lord. All my life you have been faithful, Lord. And before you're seated, welcome to those of you at home. You can greet whoever you'd like to. Let's greet one another in the house. It's great to see you here. And after that, you can be comfortably seated. Oh, what a beautiful. That was nice. Kind of like a little thing on the show there. That's coming later. What a beautiful spring day we have. So glad that you've made it in the house. So thankful that you're tuning in online. God bless you. Can we give those that are tuning in online a great big hand and welcome them to the house? Um, we welcome you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, I tell you, God has great things for us today as we look to him. It's so good, uh, so good to have Pastor Sue with us, our children's pastor. And I want you to come up, Pastor Sue. You know, it was, about, it was about 40 years ago that I met Pastor Sue at Bible College, and she was one of the shining stars, like she still is. But she was one of the shining stars at Bible College because we were at Eastern Pentecostal Bible College at the same time, and I got to know her. But I would see her Every, we had chapel every day from Monday to Friday, and I would see Pastor Sue walking across the platform because she was playing the instruments as we would worship the Lord. And we had over 500 students that were preparing for full-time ministry at that time. Those were great days. And I actually got to know Pastor Sue a little bit because Pastor Sue was the leader of our traveling music teams, and I was actually the leader. We had over 100 married students, and I was the leader of our married students committee at the time. And so we'd get together every month or two you know, a group of leaders for the various things that were going on in the college, and that's kind of where I got to know Pastor Sue. And after graduation, the Lord sent me to Sudbury, and then I, I was with my senior pastor for 14 years, Sudbury seven years, Cambridge seven years, and then the Lord blessed me to come here, and I called Pastor Sue. And I called her, and do you know, Pastor Sue's been with us almost 20 years as our children's pastor. Can you give her a great big hand? That's awesome. I mean, that is something to celebrate. And a couple of years ago, Pastor Sue told me that she was having a stirring in her heart. Uh, now, now I'm, I'm kind of from the east, and uh, she's wiser because she's from farther east, and they see that wise people come from the east. I'm from Ontario. She's actually from New Brunswick, St. John, New Brunswick. And a couple of years ago, she said, you know, Pastor Doug, God's stirring in my heart. I, 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 think, that, I think I'm wanting to get home to where, to where I was raised, to my family. Of course, the call of God in ministry takes you to wherever God leads you. And as a church... We want to support our pastors in what God is doing to them. And so, Pastor Sue, I just want you to share what God is leading in your heart, and we're going to pray for you in just a moment. Good morning. <laughs> Three times, and I've done really good till this point. <laughs> but, uh, yes, Pastor Doug has said, these have been 20 amazing, amazing years, and I would not trade them for it. Like, you realize I've now spent more than half my ministry right here at Southside. 
And, but yeah, over the last couple of years, the Lord just started saying it's time to start thinking down the road and just praying about what a transition would be for you and all of those things. And at the same time, um, you know, after 35, 32 years of not living in my hometown or even my home province, and my mother had passed away a few years before that, and there was just something in my heart that was saying, I need to start thinking about home. And um, so the journey to come to the decision about the timing, because you can know what God wants you to do, but you have to do it in his timing. And there were things here that I still felt that God wanted me to accomplish until these last few months. And so at the beginning of this year, I sat down with Pastor Doug, I think around the first part of February, and I said, Pastor Doug, the Lord has spoken clearly. And that um, this season, this ministry season, which ends in June, um, is my last few months of spa. And so these few weeks of trying to not let it slip have been really challenging. Um, and of course, even this week, as I started to call my leaders and my family even, to let them know what was going to come and, and happen, the announcement this morning. But, you know, church, through all of it, I've had a deep, deep peace. It's, it's bittersweet. Uh, I'm glad I'm not saying goodbye today because I couldn't handle it. Um, it's been a very bittersweet time. But I have a peace that I'm following God's plan. It's going to be a life transition for me. It's not just like looking for another church to minister in. It's going to be a major location change, at least starting my way back east. I don't know if I'm going to make it all the way to New Brunswick right off the top. Um, but it's going to be a ministry transition as I now start to um, just see, okay, Lord, what areas of pastoral ministry are you calling in, me into this next season of my life? So I covered your prayers. Um, I told Pastor Doug, I said, I don't want these last couple months to be like down. I want them to be a celebration of 20 years of just an incredible church, incredible pastoral team and staff, incredible board. And um, I'll stop because I'll start to, you know. Uh, <laughs> But ladies, I do want to say this. I am so looking forward to speaking um, at our ladies' event in a couple of weeks. And you'll be able to hear a little bit more of my heart then. So do I know what's happening? Nope, not a clue. But I trust God. He's called me. He will provide. Amen. And I want you to stand, please, family, and extend your hands to Pastor Sue. And we want to pray at this time for the call of God. And thank you for being faithful to pray for your pastoral team. Heavenly Father. We thank you. We've been singing, I love your voice. You've led me. And I thank you, Lord, that, that your sheep know your voice. And Pastor Sue's heard your voice. Just leading her and guiding her at this time uh, more towards the east. And I've been doing everything I can as her, as her senior pastor to help in that transition. And now as a congregation, we just bless you for Pastor Sue. We bless you for her life, for her calling, for her ministry. We bless you for this season. And we agree together with her for the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. And we're grateful, Lord. She's not going anywhere fast. We, we bless this event in April. We, we bless this Sunday night uh, party that we're going to have for Pastor Sue. I think it's the 23rd of June, and, and we look forward to that. And we pray for these next weeks, Lord, in Pastor Sue's ministry, that they will be sweet and, and that you'll just bless her. But we're, we're believing you, Lord, for that open door, and we thank you for her. In the name of Jesus and the church family said... And can you give our children's pastor a great big hand and thank you so much for praying for her. God bless you, Pastor Sue. Thank you. I'll be back in just a moment. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Jennifer. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. If it's your first time here, welcome. We would love to connect with you. Would you take a minute, go to our website and fill out our online connect card at spaforlife.com connect. If you are here in person today, we invite you to stop by our Connection Cafe following the service. We have a small gift for you. At SPA, we want to see everyone in our church find community and grow spiritually. A great way to do that is by joining a life group. We have a wide variety of groups that meet throughout each week. There's something for everyone. To learn more or to sign up for a group, please visit our website, spaforlife.com groups. Hi guys, I'm Rachel and I'm a young adult and youth leader here at SPA and I'm so excited to tell you about how you can get connected throughout the week. 
Young adults ages 18 to 28 meet every two weeks on Thursday nights from 7 to 8.30. These nights, Pastor Josh will unlock your biblical knowledge and it's a great time of fellowship and community. For students, grades 7 to 12, we have Sunday morning Bible studies. Wednesday nights, we have small groups. And lastly, Fridays at 5, the gym is open and there's video games in the lobby. Afterwards, youth group starts at 7, which is a great place to build new friendships. Sign up for our newsletter to stay up to date on all our upcoming events at spaforlife.com slash youth. That's awesome. Thank you, Rachel. We truly are so blessed to have such a great team of people working with our students here at SPA. Two weeks from today is our baptism. Everyone is welcome to attend this special worship and baptism service on Sunday, April 28th at 6 p.m. And if you have never been baptized but would like to, you can let us know by filling out the form at spaforlife.com slash baptism, or you can call the church office during the week to let them know. Here's a quick message from Wanda about a really exciting event we have coming up for our ladies. Hi ladies, this is your personal invite to join us for our spa ladies evening, the promise of spring. It will be on Monday, April 29th at 7 p.m. And our speaker will be our very own Pastor Sue Spinks sharing a message on the seasons of our lives. We will have special music, a picture presentation, an appetizer and dessert, photo booth, and great fun. You don't want to miss this night to connect with ladies and be refreshed in God's presence. The tickets are $10 and can be purchased today at the WM table in the foyer. Buy a ticket for a friend or an acquaintance you've been meaning to make a connection with, and I'll see you there. Thank you, Wanda, and thank you to each one of you for spending time with us today. Have a great week, everyone. And we are very thankful that each and every one of you are here joining us in the house or joining us online. We are continuing in our study on the Acts of the Holy Spirit, and we've been going verse by verse through the book of Acts. Today we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse 12 and going down to verse 26. Uh, so would you stand with me in the house, please, as we honor the Lord by the reading of his word? And I'm going to begin reading at verse 12 of Acts chapter 3, where we left off last week. Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is so surprising about this? And he's talking about what you heard Pastor Karsten preaching on last Sunday on the, uh, the healing of the cripple at the gate beautiful. What is so surprising about this, and why stare at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power or godliness? For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. This is the same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to release him. You rejected this holy, righteous one and instead demanded the release of a murderer. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. And we are witnesses of this fact. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed. And you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. Friends, I realize that what you and your leaders did to Jesus was done in ignorance. But God was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold about the Messiah, that he must suffer these things. Now, repent of your sins and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped away. Then, times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. And he will again send you Jesus, your appointed Messiah. For he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things as God promised long ago through his holy prophets. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. Listen carefully to everything he tells you. Then Moses said, anyone who will not listen to that prophet will be completely cut off from God's people. Starting with Samuel, every prophet spoke about what is happening today. You are the children of those prophets, and you are included in the covenant God promised to your ancestors. For God said to Abraham, 
through your descendants, all the families on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant Jesus, he sent him first to you, the people of Israel, to bless you by turning each of you back from your sinful ways. And in a moment, we want to pray for what we've just read in the Word of God, but we do have some needs that we want to remember as a congregation. Our, our receptionist, Margie, uh, and Lot, they are, they are in Toronto with some of our other friends from our congregation, but yesterday we found out that Margie's sister passed away. And so we want to be praying for, for Margie and for their family in this time of their loss. Also, uh, Bernie Hessling is in the hospital, and he's, he's not doing well, and his wife, Melita, says she's releasing him to the, to the purposes of God, so we want to pray for Bernie as well. I'm sure that uh, most, if not all of you, have seen what's taking place in Israel at this moment again, and we want to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We also want to pray for other areas of, of, uh, of God's world that are, uh, that are experiencing war and suffering. And I know that right here in the house, there are some of you that we want to pray for as well. There may be something that you're going through personally or, or someone that you're wanting to stand in for today. And if you have a need today that you'd like to bring to Jesus, would you raise your hand right now, please? Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We thank you today that it's in the name of Jesus that we come. We thank you that as we come to your throne in the name of Jesus, you've told us to come boldly, and, and there we receive grace to help us in our time of need. So I pray, Father, right now for every hand that went up in the house. I pray for every person that's watching online that lifted up a hand and said, yes, I'm praying for this need in my life, or yes, I'm praying for this need in, in, in the life of another. God, I want to thank you that when we bring our needs to you, you've promised that you will meet each and every need as we trust you. Lord, as we, uh, as we pray for Bernie Hessling today, we speak healing over his body. As we pray for Margie and Lot and the loss of Margie's sister today, we pray for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And Father, if we didn't know you, the, uh, the things that are going on all over the world could make us very anxious. But how we thank you that we know that this is our Father's world. And how we know, Lord, that you are stewarding the affairs of people in these last days. And so, God, we pray again for the peace of Jerusalem. We pay, pray, Lord, for the war in the Ukraine. We pray for lands where people are, are suffering, whether it would be a sickness or, or what they call natural disasters, or, Lord, whether they're suffering and looking for food. And, and as we do all of that, how we count our blessings to be in this house this morning how we count our blessings to know the living Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank you that as we bring these petitions to you, you promise to God, guard our hearts and our minds as we live in the knowledge of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus. And the church said together, amen. Thank you, you may be seated. And we're going to talk about today what God wants for you. I don't know if, if this has ever happened to you. Have you ever, and for me, it happens quite frequently, and it usually happens at dinner time. Does your phone ever ring in your house, and, and, and it's somebody that you don't know? And it's supper time, right? It, it, it's dinner time. And, and, and I, I'm, I gotta be honest, before I used to kind of string them along. You know, I, I kind of pretend I was with their conversation, and, and, and then I just, but I just don't do that anymore. In fact, when I'm just about to sit down and have dinner and, and enjoy that time and the phone rings, do you know what I really want to do? I want to say, what do you want? Like, what exactly do you want? Because I'm just about to sit down, I'm just about to have dinner, and I don't even know who you are. What is it that you want from me? But I don't do that. Now, my wife is much more polite than I am, because what I do is, as soon as I find out it's somebody I don't know who I know wants something from me, I just hang up the phone. But my wife, she listens for... 30 seconds to a minute, she says, no, thank you, good night. Now, I don't want to talk to you this morning about what God wants from you. But as we've read the scripture today, I want to speak to you about what God wants for you. Now, it's going to cost you giving your life, of course, but, but, but what God wants for you is the best thing that you can ever imagine. And so I'd like to look at today's text as we've read here in Acts chapter 3 and look at a number of things that God wants for you. First of all, God wants you to see your opportunities. 
God wants you to see your opportunities. Now, I know that my mother, she's tuning in from Sudbury today. Hi, Mom. I love you. I'll talk to you later this afternoon. I call my mom pretty much every day. She's going to turn 91 years young, May the 22nd. And as my mother woke up today, I know she did the same thing that she does every day. She said, Lord, I see that you've awoken me for another day. What do you have for me to do? And then she spends some time with God. Actually, this is the same prayer that I pray every morning that the Lord wakes me up. Actually, before, before having already prepared this message and, and already prepared these, these things to speak to you about, I said, Lord, please help me as I'm speaking to your people today to, to, to inspire their hearts, to, to bring something that will encourage them, to bring something that will help them. Lord, I see that you've awakened me for another day. What do you have for me to do? Now, my mother... Um, a couple of years ago, she was diagnosed with dementia, and so we moved her into a, a really good care facility, and so I thank God for the good care that's provided. Uh, she's got a nice suite, and she's got most of her own furniture there. The only thing she doesn't have is a kitchen, because she really, you know, she, she couldn't steward preparing her three meals a day and, uh, and, and, and her medications that she's on for the dementia, but she's doing incredibly well. But her life has changed. I mean, before this, my mother, my mother was involved in the birthing of the Northern Ontario uh, Christian radio station from the very beginning. And, and my mom actually was in charge of the prayer ministry uh, of, the, of the Christian uh, radio station. And she would, she would be going into the Christian radio station every day and she'd be mentoring the ladies and, and the prayer lines. And, and she'd actually be on the air every day. They used to call her on the radio, Major Matilda. I just call her mom. <laughs> but, but she would be on the... The, the radio every day, like her life has changed now that she's in this care facility. And so I just tell my mom, mom, you know what? You get to go to the restaurant three times a day and you've earned that. And she's doing really, really well. But she doesn't lament the fact that she's not going to the radio station like she used to for so many years. She wakes up every day and she says, Lord, I see that you've woken me for another day. What do you have for me to do? First of all, God wants you to see your opportunities. If you're a Christian, he wants you to see the opportunities that he's placed before you. Peter saw his opportunity, and he addressed the crowd. He said, what is so surprising about this? Speaking of the healing of the cripple by the, uh, by the gate beautiful. What is so surprising about this, and why do you stare at us? Check this out now. Why do you stare at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power and catch this or godliness? It's not even our godliness that heals people. It's Jesus. If you believe that, say amen. It's the name of Jesus. It's not what we do. It's not, it's not our power. It's not our godliness. It's the glory of God. And so God wants you to see your opportunities today. How do you do that? Well, first of all, you need to maximize every opportunity that God gives to you. Since God is waking us up, and since we're children of God, and since he has something for us to do, we need to maximize every opportunity that he gives us. How do we do that? How do we do that in a world such as the world in which we're called to live? Well, we need to be careful. Be careful, then, how you live. Don't live like fools. Don't live like those who don't know Jesus yet. They're living differently than you are. And don't live like those who say they know Jesus but aren't living like they should. <laughs> Don't live like fools, but, but live like those who are wise. And here it is now. Make the most of every opportunity. So God not only wants you to see every opportunity, but then when you see it, he wants you to make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. You know, this past Wednesday, I talked about the fact that ministry happens on the way. That, that's what happened, wasn't it? Peter was on the way to the temple, and that miracle happened. And in your life, when you leave from this place, ministry is going to happen on your way. And so God wants you to see your opportunity and maximize every opportunity that he gives you. How do you and I maximize our opportunities? Well, we have to minister. That's what God calls us to do. Minister to everyone by doing good. Not by doing bad, <laughs> but minister to everyone by doing good. So when God gives you an opportunity... Look for the good that God is calling you to do within that opportunity. And I thank God that we are filled with, with a group of women and men of God who, who love Jesus and, are, and are, are looking for every opportunity, who are looking to maximize those and are ministering by doing 
good. And, and can I encourage you today? Don't get tired. So let's, let's not get tired of doing what's good. Don't get tired of doing good. As, as God shows you and you've got another opportunity, don't get tired, just keep doing good. Don't get tired of doing good because at just the right time, we're going to reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone. Please say everyone. Now, um, one of the assignments today is going to be to do good right in this room and right in the foyer because look at what it says, especially to those who are in the household of faith. So God's calling us to do good to everybody, but especially, like today, you're surrounded by a whole bunch of people that know Jesus, and probably some that don't know Jesus yet, but if you don't know Jesus, you're in the right place, because today is the day of salvation, and that's the greatest news we could ever tell you. But especially do good to those who are in the family of faith. So what God wants for you, first of all, is that God wants you to see your opportunities. You know what else God wants for you? God wants for you to be a servant of the Lord. There's no higher honor. There's no greater privilege. There's no greater calling than to serve the one true living God. If you believe that, would you say hallelujah? I believe it too. And so God wants you to be a servant of the Lord. We read this. For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant, Jesus. You see, Jesus was the ultimate picture of what it's like to serve the Lord. Jesus brought glory to God the Father, not only by what he did, but by, by who he was, by every motivation that he had, by every thought that he had, because he is God. And Jesus, the servant of God, brought glory to God, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. And, and as you and I serve the Lord to the best of our abilities, uh, to, to, by the grace of God, we too bring glory to our Father in heaven. And that's exactly what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to be servants of the Lord. This is the same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate despite Pilate's decision to release him. You'll remember Pilate tried to wash his hands, you know, saying, I wash my hands, but it was the will of God for Jesus to go to the cross and to suffer for our eternal salvation. So, so God wants you to be a servant. What does that look like? What does it look like in 2024 to be a servant? Well, can I, can I tell you what Jesus defines a servant like? Jesus tells us exactly what a servant looks like in Mark when he says this, whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. I was telling those that were in the, in the first couple of services and I was chatting with Pastor Sue because when we were in Bible college, our president was Reverend Bob Tatinger. Now, some of you will remember Bob Tatinger. He actually pa pastored Central Pentecostal. He then was the... Um, he was the um, general superintendent of our church fellowship, the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada. But when Pastor Sue and I were in Bible college, he was the president of our Bible college. And I'll always remember at one of our married students' events, and we had over 110 married students, so there might have been, you know, with, with husbands, wives, and kids, close to 300 in that, in that buffet that we were having. And I can remember, don't remember everything on the buffet, but I do remember there was pizza and Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I'll tell you something, for students in Bible college, pizza and Kentucky Fried Chicken, like that's a feast. And it just so happened that I was sitting right at the same table as the president of our Bible college, Bob Tainter. So our table got to go first out of all those 300 students. And I'll never forget, Bob Tatinger was just in front of me. And I'll never forget, as we were going up in the, in the buffet line, he looked at me with kind eyes, and he said, Doug, just take one piece of chicken, because there's a lot of people in this room. <laughs> and you know what? That stuck with me. This is a man who's thinking not about himself. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, the Scripture says, but to serve, would you say the word with me, please? Others. Say it again. Others. And one more time. Others. And I'll tell you that lodged in my heart. And if you ever see me at a function that I'm, that I'm kind of overseeing, if that's the correct word, or serving, do you know when I go? 
I go last. So I want to make sure that everybody has went first. Unless people make me go first, I go last. And, and that's just stuck with me. Those, those, not only the words, but the example of Bob Tatinger. I mean, I wouldn't have taken five pieces of chicken. Three, maybe. God wants you to be a servant of the Lord. And as you're serving the Lord, I want you to know something. As you're, as you're doing good to people and as you're, as you're looking out to meet the needs of others, there will be those who choose to reject the message of God's love. They're not rejecting you, so, so don't, don't be mad about it. They're, they're rejecting the message of the love of God. The text read, you rejected this holy righteous one and instead demanded the release of a murderer. Isn't that horrible? That the people, all of the people, even after Pilate washed his hands, they rejected God's one and only son and demanded the release of a murderer. Give us Barabbas, they said. And you'll remember on the cross, there were two thieves and I'll tell you something. Jesus wanted both of those thieves to be in paradise. And, and both of them, like me and you, deserve to die because of our sinfulness. But the one said, Jesus, remember me. And Jesus said, I tell you the truth today. Please say today, you'll see me in paradise. Hey, if you've never, if you've never met Jesus, you can meet him even today. You rejected this holy righteous one and instead demanded the release of a murderer. So don't be surprised even maybe in your family. If, if you choose Jesus and somebody rejects you, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised even in your friendship circle. If you choose Jesus and some of your friends reject you, I, I know it will hurt. But remember, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting the message of Jesus. So some will reject. But on the other hand, there will be those who receive the message and experience new life. And so while some reject, there are also many who receive in these days and the text read, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. And we all are witnesses. Would you please say witness? Can I tell you what a witness does? I mean a good witness. They don't embellish the story. They don't make it bigger than it really was. They don't make up a story. That would be being a false witness. You know what a witness does? They just tell what they know. And that's exactly what God is telling you to do as you, as you are one who, who, uh, who lives and shares the story of Jesus Christ. What does God want for you? Well, well, God, first of all, he wants you to see your opportunities. Secondly, he wants you to be a servant of the Lord. And then talking about being a witness, God wants you to share the good news of Jesus. And that's exactly what Peter did. He began to share the good news of Jesus. It's through faith in the name of Jesus. Now, he was talking about that cripple by the gate beautiful, but every one of you that, that have received forgiveness, this is how it happened. It was through faith in the name of Jesus. It was through faith in the name of Jesus that you were born again. It was through faith in the name of Jesus that you were adopted into the family of God. It was through faith in the name of Jesus that you were taken out of the kingdom of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's wonderful light. It's through faith in the name of Jesus Christ that you have the gift of eternal life. And it was through faith in the name of Jesus, Peter said, that this man was healed. And you know how crippled he was before. And those of you that are Christians, like me, you know how crippled you were before, don't you? You know the things that held you back before. You know the things that, that, that burdened you down before. You know the chains that were around you before. You know how crippled you were before, but faith in Jesus' name has healed him, and you've been healed today by faith in the name of Jesus. If you're glad, say amen. amen. Me too. I'm so glad for the faith of God in the name of Jesus Christ. He wants you to share the good news of Jesus can I tell you how you share God's good news? It's by being a witness. We share what God has shown us. Now, I, I can't share what God has shown you, except perhaps by testimony, if you tell me. 
and, and especially if I'm teaching or preaching. I would, never, I would never have one of you who told me something about something God did, I would never just say it over the pulpit unless I asked you first. That, that's kind of one of the, Pastor Karsten, as, as your twin girls grow older, you'll have to be careful. Don't do that. I did that a few times to my kids. I just, just said something and I used them in an illustration. It's okay now because they don't understand. I mean later on when they get bigger, you know. But we share what God has shown us. I can't, like I can't, I can't share your story. Only you can. So today when you leave this place, this is what God wants you to do. He wants you to share the good of, news of Jesus. So, so when you bump into people, share what difference Jesus makes in your life. Share what God has shown you. And I love the way that Peter shares with these people who, who, uh, you know, who cursed Jesus, who rejected God's Messiah, who demanded a murderer be released except Jesus. He doesn't point a finger at them and yell at them. He says, friends, friends, I realize that what you and your leaders did to Jesus, I realize it was done in ignorance. Now, ignorance can mean, you know, to be rude. That's not what he's talking about there. Ignorance as in they didn't understand. And, and can I encourage you, those of you who have friends or family members that don't know Jesus yet, don't try to argue them in the kingdom of God. It won't work. It'll push them back. It'll push them away. And, and, and if you are speaking to them, just speak to them and say, hey, friends, listen. I, real, I know where you're at. I was there too. I used to be just like that. And, and I realize that, that what you're doing and what you've, what you've done and how you've lived your life, I realize that you didn't understand the life of God, the life that God has for you. I realize it was done in ignorance. So God wants you to share by, by, uh, by exactly what he's shown to you. And can I tell you something else that you're going to need to share as a Christian in this world? We share in his sufferings. In the book of the Revelation, it talks about, uh, there's a part of the Lord's Prayer, maybe you know it, it says, may your kingdom and your will be on as it is in, right. And so there's, there's a new kingdom coming. The same Jesus who was prophesied to come and, and live the perfect life, die on the cross for our sins and rise from the grave, and he has, he's coming again to set up his eternal kingdom. Now, the book of the Revelation tells us that in that eternal kingdom, there's going to be no more sin, no more sickness, no more pain, no more suffering, no more tears, and no more death. That's nothing like this kingdom. Can I tell you, Christian, you need to understand that for as long as we're living in this world, when we go through sufferings, we're sharing in the sufferings of Jesus. We're sharing in his sufferings. It says, but God was fulfilling what all the prophets had foretold about the Messiah, that he must suffer. Please say that word, suffer. Has anybody ever had a sliver in your finger? A sliver? I mean, it's like nothing, right? A sliver in your pinky. Like, I, you know, sometimes, boom, you just get one somehow. And, and you just kind of feel it there. It's like a little bump. Nothing, nothing. Till the next day. It's like, oh, ooh, that hurts a bit. And then if you leave it another day, it's red, it's festering, and, and I mean, your, your finger's hurting, not just where that little, but your finger's starting to hurt. That's when I call Wanda. It's, I've tried to pick it out, it's not there, and, and my finger's now red, and now I call her. I say, honey, I got a sliver in my finger, would you mind taking it out? Oh, I'd, uh, yeah, I go in the bathroom, she says, and just uh, gets her tweezers there. And then she grabs lower on my finger, it kind of hurts, she's grabbing my finger. Then she ever so gently, she ever so gently takes those tweezers, and she puts it on that little sliver, and I go, oh, stop that! That hurts! And then she takes it out, and it's just a little sliver, and this is how it feels. It's like, oh, it's gone. You know what the Apostle Paul had? He never had a sliver. He had a thorn in the flesh. He had a thorn in the flesh that came from God. And the scripture says of this thorn in the flesh that was causing him great suffering and great heartache and great pain. It says three times, I pleaded, I pleaded with the Lord to take this thorn away from me. And then as he was praying, God revealed that it was a messenger of Satan, this thorn in the flesh, to torment him. Now you know, if you were listening to a real good faith preacher today... <laughs> 
that faith preacher would say, cast that devil out of there. Let, hey, listen, let me tell you something. If you're a child of God, there's no devil that's going to control your life. The Holy Spirit's in control. If you believe that, say amen. And yet, God said this was a messenger from Satan given to torment him. And even after Paul pleaded three times, take it away. This is what God says. Listen, especially if you're suffering today. Listen, especially if you're wondering, God, why did this happen in my life? God, where are you? Why is this taking place? Listen to what the Father said to Paul. My grace is sufficient for you. God's grace is enough. Oh, he's running. Remember, he's running after you. Don't let your shoulders slump down. Stand up, woman of God. Stand up, man of God. God is with you. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. And so Paul said, you know what? I'm not going to pretend. I'm just going to boast about my weaknesses so the glory of God can rest on my life. See, God wants you to share the good news, share what you've been shown, but understand, until you get to heaven, there will be times of suffering. And here's the difference between suffering in the life of a Christian and suffering in the life of somebody who doesn't know God. Somebody who doesn't know God goes through the suffering alone. Somebody who knows Jesus, Jesus is with you. He never leaves you. He never, ever forsakes you. Can I tell you what else God wants for you? And, and, and this is a lifelong thing. God wants you to turn from your sinful desires. You might say, well, I did that. Like, well, I gave my life to Jesus when I was 18, and now I'm 39 and holding. <laughs> I'm a little older. But even though I gave my life, oh, I, I tell you, I wish when I was 18 that when I gave to my life to Jesus and I experienced forgiveness and I was born again, I wish all my sinful desires would have gone away forever. But you know what? They didn't. In fact, there was a prayer we referred earlier to um, about the kingdom coming. M maybe you've heard this part of this prayer. Uh, it's called the Lord's Prayer. Perhaps we could call it better the, the believer's prayer where Jesus taught us to pray, forgive me my... Oh, you have, you've heard it, yeah. So why would a Christian have to pray, forgive me my sins? Because we still have them. We've been forgiven, but we, but we, still, we still have to turn from our sinful desires that, that war against uh, the calling of God on our lives that cause us to want to think of ourselves instead of Christ and his kingdom and others. So God wants us to turn from our sinful desires, so we pray, forgive us our sins, Lord. And you know there's two types of sins. There's the sins that you know about. Those are the sins of commission. Lord, I'm sorry that I did that. I wasn't supposed to. And then there's the other type, the sins of omission. Those are the things that God wanted you to do, he created for you to do, and you just walked right past them. You didn't even know. But I'm so grateful, and I, I trust you are as well, that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And as we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with God. And are you glad, church, that the blood of God's Son, Jesus Christ, cleanses you from all of your sin? Me too. Me too. So God wants you to repent. And, and, and it's not a one-time deal. It's, it's a daily thing. Now repent of your sins and turn to God. Repent means not to go your own way, thinking what's best, to understand, okay, God, I've, uh, forgive me, to, to, to turn and to walk now in the ways of the Savior. Repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins might be wiped away. What does repentance mean? What does it mean to repent? It doesn't just mean to say sorry. It doesn't mean say sorry, Lord, and then just go back and do the same thing. That's not repentance. Godly repentance leads to change. Repentance, it is to feel remorse for one's sins or errors to the extent of changing one's ways. So then, repentance causes me to change my way and to be more like Jesus. So, so it's a prayer like this, Lord, I'm sorry that I did that. Please make me more like Jesus. And it's a lifelong thing, this this turning from my sinful desires. And you know when we endeavor to live like that by the grace of God, you know what repentance does in our lives? Repentance brings us the times of refreshing. Repentance brings us those times when, when all of a sudden God's spirit is moving upon our spirit, when we're, when we're being filled. It says, 
we read it, then the times of refreshment will come. I mean, the times of refreshment don't come when we're disobeying God. The Holy Spirit will convict us. But when we're saying, oh, Lord, I want to be more like Jesus. God, I want my attitude to change. I want my actions to follow. Then the times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord, and, and he will again send you Jesus. And you know, friends, that can happen right here today. There can be times of refreshing that can come under the preaching of God's word when you're with the people of God. Jesus said where two or three of people are gathered, I'm there. You know what else that can happen? It might just happen when you're reading your Bible in your, in your, wherever you do that, in your bedroom or just in a quiet place. You might just be going about normally reading your Bible like we eat food. And all of a sudden, the, the wind of the Spirit comes upon you. And the times of refreshing. Then the times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. And, and listen, as we repent and live in repentance, in godly repentance, he will send you Jesus. He will send you Jesus. He's your appointed Messiah. So as we live in repentance, we, we, we experience from time to time times of refreshing. And do you know what else repentance does for us? Repentance prepares us for that time, God's time of restoration that we already prayed about. May thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Repentance prepares us for God's time of restoration. Speaking of Jesus, he must remain in heaven until the time for the final restoration of all things, as God promised long ago through his holy prophets. So what does repentance mean? Repentance means I'm dying to my selfish ways. I'm, I'm understanding that I want to live for Jesus and that God is helping me. He's, his spirit is in me. I'm, walk, I'm becoming more and more like Jesus. Repentance, it brings us the times of refreshing. It prepares us for God's time of restoration. But you know what else repentance will do for you? Repentance will lead you to experience the resurrection. Everybody please say resurrection. Can I ask you a question? If something's going to have to be resurrected, what has to happen first? It needs to die. Right? Makes sense? There's no death. Excuse me. There's no resurrection unless there's death. Can I ask you one more question? According to Jesus, how often do we as Christians have to die? Every day. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, any one of you can be my disciple. All that you need to do is deny yourself daily, deny your selfish ways, take up your cross every day and follow me. Repentance will lead you to experience the resurrection life of Jesus Christ. Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up. And I'll tell you something, when, when by the grace of God you live in repentance, desiring in all that you think, in all that you say, in all that you do, in how you prioritize your life, desiring to live for him, you will experience resurrection. God will raise you up. Moses said, God will raise up for you a prophet just like me from among your own people. Can you please read this last sentence with me? From listen. Listen carefully to everything he tells you. Can you say that once more with me, please? Listen carefully to everything he tells you. You know, as we went into this series on the acts of the Holy Spirit, I, I just felt led from the Lord, and, and, and I knew that there would be times when you'd be sitting in church just like this or tuning in online, and God would specifically speak to you. And I believe that's going to happen as we continue to walk through this book of the acts. But I know that God is speaking to us as a church. I know that God is directing us as a church and that God is unifying us as a church as we walk through this, uh, this act of the Holy Spirit. And when, when you said those words with me twice, listen carefully to everything he tells you. I was thinking of the voice of the Holy Spirit in your life as a child of God. Because the Bible says that all of those who are children of God are led by the Spirit of God. And, and when you said today twice with me, listen carefully to everything he tells you, I was thinking of that last book in the Bible, The Revelation of Jesus Christ. And in that book of The Revelation of Jesus Christ, there are seven letters given to seven churches. And, and at, at the end of each of those letters, it says these words, let those who have ears to hear, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to them. 
And that's my prayer for you right now, child of God. It's, it's not that you're going to have an angel appear before you in all likelihood. It's not that you're going to have an audible voice, uh, you know, knock you down in all likelihood. It's that leading of the Holy Spirit in your life. And so repentance, it will lead you to experience that resurrection life as you say, Lord, I want to hear everything that you're talking to me about. And, and talking about repentance and turning from your sinful desires, I'm so excited about what's happening right here, Sunday, April the 28th. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ and you've never been water baptized, can I talk to you right now? I don't mean as a baby. I was baptized as a baby. But after I became a believer in Jesus, I wanted to be baptized myself. And here at Spa, we practice believer's baptism. So we practice baptism for people who've come to know Christ. So if you've given your life to Jesus, can I encourage you uh, to join us? It's going to be Sunday, April the 28th at 6 p.m. We're going to have a water baptismal service and a prayer service. And so you can sign up online. It's, it's on our webpage. But I want you not only, uh, if you've already been baptized and you're part of our church family, I want you to mark this date down, April the 28th, and I want you to be praying for this. Because not only will we be praying for our baptismal candidates to receive the fullness of God and the Holy Spirit, we're going to be praying for you. We're going to be praying for those of you that need a touch from God, for those of you that need a healing from God, for those of you that want more of God, that, for those of you that want a refreshing in the Holy Spirit, we're going to be praying for you too. So mark that date down, and uh, you can register online for that water baptism. It's Sunday, April the 28th at 6 p.m. A water baptism, a prayer service, a worship service. It's going to be a great, great night. Lastly, what does God want for you? God wants you to speak the truth in love. Get that in love part. You know, there are times in our lives when, when we might be intersec intersecting or interacting with, with a person or a time or a place or an experience, and we know what the truth is for that person, that situation, or that experience, but if we spoke it right then, it wouldn't be in love. God wants you to speak the truth in love. Maybe if, if you find yourself in a place, it's just time to maybe pray about that situation. Or maybe it's time to just do an act of love so that the people would see the love of God in you and through you. God wants you to speak the truth in love. Starting with Samuel, every prophet spoke about what is happening today. Would you please say today? I'll tell you what. This Bible and prophecy is a lot more on time than what you're going to see on the news today and tomorrow. God is holding all of the affairs, everything that you see going on in the Middle East, in, in the Middle East today, every, everything that you see going around, uh, around that, little, uh, that little portion of land, the people of God, all of that's on God's prophetic time calendar. And God has, God has all of the times and dates and places in his calendar. And until he comes, he just wants us to be speaking the truth of God in love today. Would you please say it once again, please, today? And, and as you're speaking the truth of God and love, can I tell you exactly who God wants to include in this message of salvation? God wants to include everyone. He wants to include absolutely, there's no one. There's no one that's outside of God's desire for them to come to know Jesus and receive the gift of eternal life through the sacrifice that Jesus paid on the cross. Do you remember what John the baptizer said when he saw Jesus coming toward him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the... He died for the whole wide world. We read this. You are the children of these prophets. And you are included in the covenant promise to your ancestors. You see, the, the, the first promises of God, they were given to the children of God. They were given to God's people, the Jews. And, and I'm just looking over this congregation, and do you know what I'm noticing? I don't think there's too many natural-born Jews here. <laughs> but if you're glad that even though you're not a Jew, that you've been grafted in to the covenant promises of God, would you say one more time, hallelujah? hallelujah. I'm glad too. Even though we're not Jews, you see, God wants everyone to be included in his promise of salvation. Can I tell you what else God wants? God wants us to be international. God doesn't want us just to gather around people who are just like us, who look like us, who wear the same clothing we do and eat the same food we have and have the same traditions that we all have. No. God wants us to be international. For God said to Abraham, through your descendants, 
all the families on the earth will be blessed. And as I again look across the face of our congregation, I'll tell you something. Every time I see another nation, because we are a church for every nation and every generation, every time I see another nation come into this church family and find fellowship with others that, that, that aren't coming from the same location in the world that they came from, I just feel this church is looking more and more like heaven every day. Because when we get to heaven, can I tell you who's going to be worshiping, crying out, worthy is the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world? Can I tell you who's going to be crying out for all eternity around the throne room of heaven? It's going to be people from every tribe and every language and every nation giving glory to Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So can I encourage you, congregation, would you tell others of your particular nationality about what God is doing right here and would you invite them to come in and experience the goodness of God that we have in Jesus Christ because God wants us to be international and to have all of the descendants of all of the families in all of the earth to be blessed amen and when we live this way when we speak the truth and in love including everyone in God's province in God's promise of salvation, welcoming all of those from, from all different kinds of places and all different types of nationalities. When we come together like that in the Holy Spirit, do you know what God wants to do through you? God wants to invoke his blessing through his people. You're leaving in minutes. Just looked at the clock. And you know where you're going? where I'm not. <laughs> and you know what you're doing? You're carrying the blessing of God. You're going to a place that I can't go. And God wants to invoke his blessing not only on you, but through you. When God raised up his servant Jesus, he sent him first to the people of Israel to bless you by turning each of you back from your sinful ways. Can I tell you something else that God, that God wants for you? God wants you to invest in the kingdom of heaven. And I want to say thank you to those of you who faithfully invest in the kingdom. I don't know, some of you give by envelope in the offering boxes, some of you are giving online, uh, some of you are giving by e-transfer. However you're giving, we just want to say thank you. Some of you come into the church and give. But I want to thank those of you who invest in the kingdom of heaven. And God sure wants you to do that. This is what Jesus said about, about you investing in the kingdom. Because you can't take it with you. You cannot, but you can send it ahead. Jesus said, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal, but store up your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. And here's what's true. As you bring the tithe to the Lord, as you give in missions offering, if God has prospered you greatly and you you choose not to leave it down here but to invest in the kingdom of heaven i'll tell you something you allow us to do missions all over the world you allow us to do ministry right here and we couldn't do it without you but something else happens when you give like that to god when you truly sacrifice wherever your treasure is there the desires of your heart will also be so i want to thank you for being faithful in giving to the lord jesus today would you stand with me please i want to close in a word of prayer, and, and this is not what, what do you want, God? This is not like that, you know, like that irritating phone call. What do you want from me, God? But today, as we've looked at this text, text, we've looked at what God has for you. Let's pray together, please. Lord, I want to thank you that you want us to see our opportunities. Open our eyes. Even in this house, Lord, let us do good right here. <laughs> Help us to see our opportunities. Thank you, Lord, that you want us to be servants of the Most High God. Thank you, Father, that we have the privilege of sharing the good news of Jesus. Thank you, God, that, that you actually want us to turn from our, not just pray a prayer of salvation, but, but if you've never received Jesus, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. If you're here or if you're watching online and you've never received Christ, you can receive him right now as God's working in your heart. If you're here in the house, you can receive the love of Christ right now by praying a prayer something like this. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sin. 
I know that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. And so, so God, I give you my life. I turn from my sin. Jesus, I invite you to be Lord of my life. And Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. Help me to live for you forever, I pray in his name. I'll tell you what, if you prayed that prayer from your heart, I won't have to tell you you're a Christian. God will tell you from the inside out. You'll be born again by the Spirit of God. But when it talks about God wanting us to turn from our sins, he's talking about repentance. And, and, and I want to talk to you now, if you're a Christian, you've known Jesus for a week or for, for 50 years, and I want to ask you, is there something you need to repent of and let God speak to you right now? What is it? Just let him speak to you right now. And can I encourage you, would you repent from that? Would you turn from that? Because you're going to find the resurrection life of Jesus as you choose to turn in obedience. And finally, God wants you to speak the truth in love. Thank you, Lord for the working of your spirit upon each one of our hearts and lives. And now I pray for each one that's here, for each one that's online today, I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. I pray that the Lord will be gracious to you. I pray that the Lord will lift his countenance up over each and every one of your lives. And in the strong name of our living and our loving Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray the Lord will give you his peace. And the church family said together... Now do good right now to some people right in this house and do good to everybody as you leave this place. Thanks for being here today. God bless you. Have a great week in the Lord.
Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing hearts is all.